This leads to problems which affect our swallowing. Swallowing problems are called dysphagia. Normally these swallowing problems occur because of the altered motility. So things not contracting as they should do to push things down. But there can be other causes and we need to exclude these. When acid comes back it can damage the mucosa causing inflammation and over time that inflammation can cause scarring to cause strictures which are narrowed areas. So we need to rule those out. There are many tests that we can do. Imaging studies, CTs, bariums, endoscopies can show that esophagus to be wide and moving poorly. This image in the top corner is a barium image. It shows the esophagus to be wide and there's no pinches, it's not contracting, it's just sitting there full of barium, so nothing's draining away. We see these barium studies being abnormal in people with symptoms. But even in people without symptoms, we can detect problems. And the more sensitive test is manometry. That involves putting probes down and measuring the pressure responses to a stimulus. The colourful picture at the bottom shows a manometry trace. The first colourful one is normal. So given a stimulus, you can see the pressure wave coming down the yellows and the reds. So that's a squeeze. In the scleroderma person, we can't see anything doing. So there's no squeeze, no pressure pushing things down. So we can understand how our food might struggle to get down. This monotony is so sensitive that it can be abnormal in people with no symptoms at all. So what do we do? Well, we can't cure this, so we try to use medications to help us. We classically use our prokinetic agents. These are drugs that try to push things forward. So the ones you may have heard of are domperidone and metoclopramide. We're trying to use these drugs less now because there's been safety alerts associated with them. If we need them, we have to use them, but there are safety concerns out there. I've mentioned about reflux. Reflux is when that acid comes back up to cause damage. We can see the damage at endoscopy. This should all be this pink colour, but it's not. You can see the angry red damage. We call that esophagitis. But acid can come up and actually not cause damage, but still causes pain and discomfort. And we can test for that using pH studies, where we put probes down to measure the acidity that's present. Again, we have no real cure. So we look at lifestyle. We try to avoid those foods that trigger off our acidity. We try to avoid eating late at night and we sleep propped upright. Those things use gravity to try and help us. We also look at weight management to reduce the pressure on this side of the diaphragm because that's additional pressure on this weakened juncture. We look at medications to help. So we have our alginates and that's just an alginate is just a buffer barrier. So the classical one is Gaviscon. It just lies a coating. We also have our acid suppressant drugs. Ones you may have heard of will be lansoprazole, pantoprazole, or meprazole, a little family. No drug is really any better than any other drug. But we do know that twice daily dosing is better. We also know that these drugs provide symptomatic relief, but don't actually prevent progression of problems. There have been some operations done to help. These operations are called fundoplications. They tighten the juncture at the bottom by wrapping the stomach around. We try not to use them in people with scleroderma because they make swallowing difficulties worse and they don't give us long-term benefit.